Hello people, this is Matt Fisher back with another exciting tutorial for you guys today as always and this is going to be the next video in my set of security guides. This is going to be Mac OS or Mac OS X Security 101. So we're here at our Mac and everything that I'm going to show you today works both in OS 10 and Mac OS. Doesn't matter which operating system you're running as long as that it's Mac. And the first thing you want to do is go into system preferences because that's where everything that we do today is going to take place. And we first want to go into users and groups. And the first thing that we want to do is disable the guest account. Because one of the easiest ways for someone to get unauthorized access to our computer is by using the guest account if it's enabled. So we just want to uncheck that. Click that lock again so we can confirm our changes. And then everything else we do moving forward is going to take place in the security and privacy section of system preferences. So on this first tab, well, first we're going to click this lock so we can uh, make some changes. So the first setting you want to do is you want to check off this box that says require password however many minutes after sleep or screensaver begins. So basically what that's saying is that if your computer goes to sleep or you start the screensaver, when you come back to the computer, you're going to have to enter in a password before getting your desktop. And obviously we want to change this to immediately. The second that someone comes back to the computer from it being asleep or it having the screensaver on, we want it to ask for a password because the last thing we want someone to do is to walk up to the computer and just have access simply because, you know, you stepped away and the screensaver began and it was just unprotected. And then to add to that, you should definitely check the one below it that says disable automatic login because if you're not going to require a password when you log in but you are at your screensaver, that's kind of counterintuitive because someone could just reboot your computer and log in. So you want to make sure that your computer doesn't auto log in and that it asks for a password there as well. Now on the file vault tab, I don't know if many of you have used file vault, but this is pretty much the equivalent of uh, BitLocker on Windows. And basically what this does is this encrypts your hard drive or your solid state drive. So if you click turn that on, uh, it's going to use your iCloud account. Uh, if you had one set up, I'm obviously on a uh, secondary account right now, which is why iCloud's not set up. Um, but otherwise, I could use a recovery key. And basically what that's going to do is in case, God forbid, I couldn't remember how to log in and my uh, entire hard drive is encrypted, I can use this recovery key to unlock. Uh, I am not going to do that right now uh, just because of the account that I'm on but I would highly recommend that you guys would click continue. Uh, and this probably takes, depending on the size of your hard drive, this could take anywhere from uh, you know, 10 minutes to a couple hours. So just be wary of that. Then on the firewall tab, most importantly, you wanna make sure the firewall is on because if it's not, you're just allowing thousands of uh, unnecessary connections to your computer or potential unnecessary connections to your computer. So it's good to be safe. So you wanna make sure that your firewall is on. And then lastly, in the privacy tab, you just want to review location services. You want to make sure everything in this list uh, actually needs access to the location service. So maps, weather, that's okay with me, but you can see I'm not giving it to calendar or Twitter or reminders or anything like that. And if we wanted to check system services, I guess Safari and Spotlight is, is okay. But you know what? I'm actually going to check that off because I don't use Safari that often on this computer. I actually use Google Chrome. So... There's no reason for that to be on. And then obviously when you're done making your changes, you want to click that lock one last time to just confirm it and make sure that uh, no one can come back in here and undo what you just did or you restart your computer and then lose those changes. So I actually have two more things to show you guys. I just have two applications that I want to show you guys and they're pretty basic, pretty simple. I think you guys will at least appreciate one of them. Uh, this first one is called Malwarebytes. You guys have probably heard about this. Uh, it's just your basic antivirus software. There's a free version for Mac and Windows. I would highly recommend downloading it. I haven't had to use antivirus in maybe the, I don't know, 10 years I've been using Mac. But you want to download it just in case, God forbid, you got a virus that severed your network ability or didn't allow you to install applications. Uh, it's better to be proactive than it is to be reactive. So I would just recommend you go ahead and download this. But the second application, arguably the more exciting one, is called Oversight. And what this does is this monitors how your internal camera and your internal microphone are being used. So I actually have it already installed right now. It's this little umbrella in the menu bar. And as you guys can see right now, I don't have any active devices or any applications using the internal mic and the internal camera. But if we went ahead and we opened up QuickTime, 
and we go to file new audio recording and we can see that because we're using the built-in microphone we get a little notification that says hey uh, your built-in microphone that has become active so now if I come in here I can see active devices built-in microphone and if I was going to use my iSight camera, it would prompt me. It would be like, hey, do you want to approve or deny access to uh, the iSight camera? So this is called Oversight. I'll have a link to both these applications in the description down below. Uh, just good tools to have. Like I said, better to be proactive than reactive. But that's going to do it for the video that I have for you guys today. Make sure to leave me a comment down below letting me know ways that I can improve this series and also what device you want me to cover next. So Mac or Android device or Linux or something else, let me know in the comments down below. But other than that, guys, make sure to click subscribe so you know when the next episode comes out in this series. Enjoy the rest of your day and take care.